Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Friday. All right, let's go up to Whitefish Ski Area here. Big mountain up there in uh, parts of northwest Montana. It is still snowing up there. You picked up several inches of accumulation, and it even snowed all the way down into town. So it's we're seeing some nice cold air move into this area. Now, this is our next cold front and storm system that's going to drop to the south and kind of follow this northwest flow through Montana and eventually into Colorado. On its way through, it will brush northern Utah, but not looking impressive with this first storm for um, northern Utah. Here's radar. There it is. You can pretty much see the front right here. So again, that's going to take this sort of track. Uh, and again, just barely brushing northern Utah. But there's an area of low pressure in here. So up around Kalispell, that's where whitefish is, and that's your snow. So um, let's take a look at the uh, water vapor satellite imagery, give you the big picture here. Whites and blues are going to be your moisture, your water vapor up in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So there's our storm system. Out ahead of it, we've got some pretty strong southwesterly winds, and you can see the wave cloud action blowing off the top of the Colorado Rockies there with that cloud cover. But this low, again, will move down in this direction. That's low number one. Then you've got another one spinning here out in the Pacific. That's number two. And then just barely off the screen is number three. So the track will be very similar with all of these. But as the second one comes in, it's going to go a little bit further to the south. And that one is the best shot of snow for the Wasatch between the first, the second, and the third. Because the third one will come in pretty similar, but it's going to be much weaker as it looks right now. So while there are, are three storms, it's the second one. If you're living in Utah, it's the second one that's probably going to be the one to watch. Um, here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm looking at in this forecast period, just like we talked about yesterday. Three cold fronts, three storms through 12-3. Here are your best odds of accumulating snow in Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. So for example, in Colorado, you've got light to moderate accumulations coming um, this afternoon, tonight, into the morning hours of 29. And then light to moderate, 12-30 into 12-1, and then a little bit of additional snow on 12-2. In the Wasatch, you've got some snow coming um, basically today through tomorrow morning, light. Again, glancing blow. Light to moderate 11.30, so that's a little better. And then light 12.2, light 12.3. So that's how it looks right now. And I won't go through all the other dates, but they're right there if you want to see them. Here's the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today, roughly, uh, on Friday, November 28th. And again, there's our front and at this point by lunch it's starting to move into the Tetons it's moving through the rest of uh, Idaho it's got big sky it's, it's snowing there all right let me move this ahead so lunch dinner hour right here now by the time we get to dinner I mean the thing is racing and this cold front is strong so it's already plowing down into Colorado um, a very warm day today initially in Denver and then the temperature is going to drop like a rock um, tonight into Saturday behind this front. So all, pretty much all the locations behind this front, you've got cold air, colder air sweeping in very quickly. Um, so that's going to help with the snow efficiency in the atmosphere. But notice snow beginning there. This is late tonight, this afternoon tonight in Colorado. You've got, again, right there's your glancing blow into the Wasatch and the High Uintas and some snow racing down through Casper, um, all the way down to the Laramie Range. Um, so again, all that's moving pretty fast and then wraparound snow into parts of Montana. All right, let's go into early tomorrow morning. By 5 a.m. on Saturday, the low is already out into the plains and it's basically over. I mean, a lot of the storm snow is over. Now, you might have a little bit of residual or a graphic snow over the central and northern, the front range high peaks of Colorado behind that thing because it would tend to be in a northwest flow pattern. All right, now let's move ahead. Um, let's go into, so here we are, 5 a.m. on Sunday, November 30th. And we look at this. This is our next storm system. And like I was saying, this one goes a little bit further to the south. So it's going to be a little more of a direct impact here on the Wasatch. So snowing there uh, early in the morning on Sunday. Let's move ahead. Here's the lunch hour. 
This is lunch on Sunday. Still snowing Wasatch High Uintas, and now we've got snow moving in to Colorado as well and Wyoming. All right, here's the dinner hour. Snow moving out of Utah through Colorado. And then here we are 5 a.m. on Monday, and the storm is moving away. Just residual snow in Colorado, and we'll wait on the next storm system to move in. Here's a time height forecast. Loveland Ski Area in Colorado, Front Range High Peaks. Um, so you're looking at a slice of the atmosphere over the next three days. This is the current moment, and you move in this direction uh, into the future to see what's coming. So you've got one storm system. That's the one that's up in Montana right now that will hit Loveland, A Basin, uh, Winter Park, Breck, Vail, Steamboat, Snowmass. That comes in uh, late tonight and runs through uh, Saturday morning. So tonight through Saturday morning, maybe even this afternoon through Saturday morning. Then you get a dry break. Then here comes the next storm. And notice the depth of green is more significant. Uh, it's a better track. So this one comes in afternoon, evening of the 30th into the morning of the 1st. So you're looking at two different storm systems, two different fronts right here, sweeping into Colorado. Atmospheric pressure anomalies on Saturday, 1129, there's our low, there's our cold front moving through. Um, we talked about that. That's the first drop in pressure. Here's the second one. Now, this is on Sunday, and there's our low. It's a little bit further to the south with the front, so that one will be racing through. That's storm number two. Now, we got to talk about the extended forecast, so this is 12.6. This is a pretty interesting setup with higher than normal pressures across a lot of the west and a significant drop in pressures and a big dip in the jet here over the east. Now, the forecast guidance has been kind of all over the place here in the extended forecast. The issue is there is some warming way up in the stratosphere in the extended forecast. The, what that tends to do is destabilize or an indicator of, a, of an unstable sort of polar vortex flow, which spins these deep areas of low pressure around. And so this is one possibility. I wouldn't lock in on it yet. Be, but nonetheless, these lobes of very low pressure and cold air will tend to move around more. And that's what we might be seeing as we head into December. It could be uh, a pretty active month across the lower 48 with these deep lows and these lobes of very cold air sweeping across the country. Now, a couple of days ago, this was indicated to be across the West. Now it's across these. So you see what I'm saying? There's this sort of uncertainty, but it's something to pay attention to in the extended forecast as to where these things are going to end up. Here's a total precip over the next five days as if it all fell as rain because now it's indicated that those deep lows are going to be off to the east. There's not nearly as much precip with higher than normal pressures indicated here in the extended forecast. However, with these two lows coming through, there is some moisture here. It's just not incredibly deep. I mean, I see a couple of areas of yellow, which is the break point for an inch. It's just not all that impressive. So you're seeing both storm systems kind of come down out of the Pacific Northwest and sweep down through the Rockies. Let's change the vantage point and go to the southwest. Um, same day, five-day precip, total precip. Some of that ends up in Colorado. And yeah, there's definitely probably a 6 to 12-inch swath there across western and southwest Colorado. But it's, it's not as deep as it was. Here is sort of your very simple 10 to 1 five-day snow forecast. And there it is. I mean, you can see the storm track. Nothing for California. Everything is really in the Rockies. And there really there isn't a whole lot there for Utah. You know, storm number two is pretty decent. But, you know, with this 10 to 1 ratio, I mean, this is kind of, you know, like elementary. This will get you to the ballpark, but it won't help you find your seat. It just kind of gives you a good overview. Deep purple is at least six inches. Bright pink would be a foot. There's not a lot of bright pink here on that map. Five-day snow. Let's change the vantage point. 
So this is uh, to the southwest, and again, you, you're going to have at least six inches there across western and southwest Colorado. And that's where I see the deepest purple. So here's my official forecast, and these are grand totals by the close of business on 12-2. I went up to 5 to 10 here, assuming that second storm does what it's forecast to do. Uh, I think that will be the best chance of pushing those numbers up across the Wasatch, so 5 to 10. But this entire area across the southwest is very dry. We'll zoom into Colorado in a second, but I've got 8 to 10 up here. Bridger Bowl, Big Sky, Grand Targhee, Jackson Hole. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inches up here. Brundage, central to northern Idaho, northwest Montana. Barely anything in uh, interior B.C. Whistler's out of the storm track. There is some snow that comes in through Washington State, but it's just not all that impressive. So let's zoom into Colorado. Grand totals by the close of business on 12-2. So I've got 6 to 10 up here through Keystone, Arapahoe Basin, Winter Park, up to Cameron Pass, Steamboat. 7 down in Breck, Summit County. 7 over Vail, 8 at Copper, based on the wind flow that I see. And then most of the accumulations out here. Western Slope, down into the northern San Juans, and even Wolf Creek at a foot. Those numbers have fluctuated about an inch or two. Um, in the last 24 hours, but uh, down here, three to six over the top of northern New Mexico. Uh, we really do need this snow. I mean, we need the snow up in the Wasatch. Uh, things are uh, in bad shape. I mean, we're just we're running some of the latest opening dates that we've seen in, in a number of years. So we need colder air, and we need a lot of snow accumulation. And um, at least there are three storms lined up. I mean, they're not gigantic, but uh, it could be worse, I suppose. Um, here's the northeast. So five-day total snow, 10 to 1. There are three waves, two, three, right there. The third one comes pretty cl close to the coast, almost like it's a coastal low. And right there, I mean, you spread a nice swath of snow over Massachusetts uh, in southern New England. Uh, deep purple is at least six inches. Bright pink is going to be a foot. And there is definitely a foot. Look at this lake effect off of Lake Michigan. I mean, you're over a foot there in some of those preferred places. Where I went to school at Valparaiso, it looks like there's going to be quite a bit of snow in northwest Indiana. Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, you've got lake effect, 6 to 12 at least. Now, some of these numbers are looking at at least six inches up here across a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Here's my forecast. This is where we'll end it. So uh, grand totals by the end of 12-2. You've got f basically four to eight up here across upstate New York, uh, four to eight up here over Vermont into Tremblant, and the high point's probably going to be Mount Washington at 10 inches. But look at this. Wachusett to Ragged, those numbers, 5, 6, 7, 8 inches, not out of the question, through Cranmore, um, Sunday River, and Sugarloaf. So pretty solid there for the Northeast. I mean, not huge, but at least there are two or three different waves of snow to kind of refresh things. All right, so we'll end up right here um, on this, uh, this Friday, and there are your grand totals. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in here on this Friday. I appreciate it. Take care and uh, have a great day today.